Thank you for your participation in the Great Nevada Shakeout, an exercise to demonstrate the procedures to be followed to maximize the safety and well-being of our students, staff, and those around you in the event of an earthquake. There is often a false sense of security that we do not have earthquakes in Nevada. The little known fact is that the unique geology of Nevada includes a multitude of major and minor fault lines, as well as proximity to many more in our neighboring state of California. The effects of an event there are often felt right here in Nevada. With earthquakes as an inevitable part of our future, Schools should make plans and take actions to ensure that disasters do not become catastrophes. What we do now will determine what our lives will be afterwards. The principles practiced here will apply to many other hazards. Schools also need to be prepared for fires, floods, hazardous material releases, and other man-made and natural disasters. With this in mind, this earthquake drill and preparedness activity has been made available to schools of all sizes to get their staff, students, and parents involved and prepared for a big earthquake. The preparedness of school staff, students, and their families will be essential to supporting your school's response and recovery efforts after a disaster. The following drill guidelines are designed for schools and each drill uses the general earthquake response of drop, cover, and hold on as its foundation. So what is it that you need to do for you and your students to get the most from the exercise? Prepare yourself. First, check that the school emergency evacuation route map is posted in your room. On it, mark your room clearly in a contrasting color. If you do not have a copy, please obtain one from the school office. Second, review your emergency folder and its contents to ensure that you have the information that you or your substitute would need should there be a drill or an actual emergency. Also, be prepared to buddy with a neighboring class so that one teacher is at front and one at back of the two class group. Be sure that you know your duties once classes are assembled. If your name does not appear on the emergency operation plan, and if you do not have a class, report to the Incident Command Center. Do not leave the campus. Plan to accommodate students and personnel with disabilities. Check that you know the location of your fire extinguisher and recall the acronym PASS to remind you how to use pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep at the base of the fire. Plan both experiential learning activities to make use of the drill and quiet learning activities that students can do in the assembly area in the event of a real emergency. Next, prepare your students. Encourage your students to take this drill very seriously. Practice a drop, cover, and hold on drill. Having students hold their position for one minute. You may count together. One one thousand, two one thousand, etc. Drop down to your knees to make yourself as small as possible. Cover your face, head, and neck, closing your eyes. Keep your body under or below a level of a desk, table, or chairs, with your back to windows. Be aware of objects or structures that may fall. Exposed electrical sources, flames, escaping water, gas, or other hazardous materials, and take appropriate measures to minimize the dangers. If outside, get clear of buildings, power lines, trees, light poles, and other dangers. Drop down to your knees and cover your head and neck. Teach your students the four rules of building evacuation. Don't talk, don't push, don't run, and don't turn back. Students should know that if there is an earthquake, when they are anywhere on campus but outside of a classroom during break or lunch, they should exit with the nearest class and should not go back inside. If they are between classes, they should assemble in the outdoor emergency assembly area with their next period class. Teachers in science labs and workshops should demonstrate to students how to extinguish any flames and isolate any hazardous materials in use. Everyone needs to review the emergency evacuation routes. Monitors need to be prepared to assist teachers with evacuating students, especially with classes on second floor or without easy access to open space outdoors. Make your students aware that only their parents, guardians, or other adults listed on their emergency card will be allowed to pick them up from the school in a real emergency. Thank you for being a part of this very important exercise. Your being prepared will help bring calm and order into what will undoubtedly be a frightening situation, minimize the chance of injury, and quite possibly save lives. If you have any further questions, please visit www.shakeout.org 
forward slash Nevada.